Welcome to the video. Now, just a quick shout out to GCN if you want some more cycling uh, mechanical tips. There's a lot of things I disagree with GCN on the marketing and some of the nutrition stuff is hit and miss. But what I don't disagree on is some of the some of the mechanical tips, how to change your gear, cables, etc. So GCN got some great tips. Go check out them. Also, shout out to GC Performance. We're going for the GCs here. GC Performance, I think it's a bike shop in America, USA. Could be in Canada. I'm pretty sure it's USA. But he's like building all these new specialized bikes he's weighing them so this is a bit of a shout out to gc performance we've got a, a beautiful bike here this is um an sl4 rubay s work specialized bike uh, one of my favorite bikes ever so we're going to do a safety check on the fork all right so if you like these videos give it a thumbs up this helps the algorithm leave a comment etc these are the videos that you want everyone to know about the bicycle safety videos you don't want to be in a bunch when someone's fork steer snaps because they had spaces, too many spaces above where this fork plug was deep enough for us. So this video here is very important. Give it a thumbs up if you like important safety videos. First of all, we're gonna do a GC performance style. We're gonna weigh the bike. Uh, I like how he weighs all the bikes, it works. And it's good for us OCD. So we've got zeroed here, the bike scales. We're gonna weigh this SL4. It's, you know, it's a pretty, it's got no pedals on there. It's got a bottle cage. It's a pretty stock spec. We can make it blink. Um, I'm gonna put this scale on here, make sure it doesn't hit me in the face. Some of you are like, I hope it hits him in the face. And we're gonna go, wait for the beep. All right, this is the weight of the bike, SL4 Tarmac, the Roubaix rather, SRAM Red Gen 2, 6.6 kilos. What's that in pounds? Let me know down below. 6.6 um, .6 kilos, no pedals. And it's got a cage on it and a mount. Now, comparison's sake, we've gotta do it. It wouldn't be a Duranite video if we didn't harp on about a disc brake bike. Come on, over here. We've got the SL7 Tarmac. No pedals, no cage, no mount. We'll tar this, uh, tear this. Um, but yeah, just for comparison's sake, because people might ask in the comment section, how much does the SL7 weigh during rod for the eighth time? I love these videos, and I love my audience that people keep coming back to learn more. I basically just make the videos that I would have liked to have learned back in the day uh, when I was first getting into cycling. All right, so that's no pedals, no cage, no mount. Dura Ace 7.14, so it's you know over 500 grams heavier than a bike from 10 years ago, pretty much. The new bike's a lot heavier because of disc brakes. Anyway, let's get into the video what you're here for. Uh, let's put the scales down. Let's pick up the torque wrenches. Torque wrenches are good. Uh, especially if you're working, if you're new to work on a bike, get yourself a torque wrench. These are the ones here, Richie, Bontrager, just they're cheapo and they still work great. To give you an idea of what you should be talking on, we use a tree here. How amazing that is! This tree is the exact height that I want. Make sure it's in there perfect, and we're going to drop this fork out first. We're going to we're going to leave the front wheel in, um, just in case the fork did drop out for some reason. It's not going to damage it. So we're, when you're working on carbon stuff, you always want to um, be careful what you're doing. Yeah? So. I'm just using a multi-tool here. You know, in a workshop you're using the proper tools, but this is just to let you know how simple this job really is. So first of all, we're gonna move the front brake um, so we can drop the fork out fully and give the fork a full inspection. We're also gonna re-grease the headset here, uh, which is important to do because headset bearings can last a very, very long time if you're riding in wet weather and grit. It's a good idea to drop your fork out every few months just to re-grease your headset. Now, if you've got one of these newfangled bikes, the Canyons or the SL7 or the, the Venge, these proprietary sort of fork disc brake stuff, it can be a bit of a pain in the rump to drop your fork out because all the cables run through the steerer and you have to basically re bread lead your fork. It's just a nightmare for mechanics. It's a nightmare for mechanics, really. Um, and I think bikes, the beauty of cycling is it's, you know, it's a pretty easy job to do. You know, Make sure you don't lose this, lose this little thing. This goes on the end of your end of your brake nozzle thing. So we'll put that over here. We'll lose it later on. Forget where we put it. We're also gonna now, our second step is we're gonna undo the two, these bolts here. You we'll have one or two bolts. Ideally, you've got two bolts on your stem. You've got a three teeters on with just one bolt. Let's hope that bolt doesn't fail on you because that's the only one holding your, holding your stem on your fork there. Yeah. We just racked up a few lines of nullable white, so excuse the, uh, the off-tangent discussions here. We've got a three, uh, 360 camera coming this week. Uh, so shout out to Cycling Maven, Mark Ferguson, for hooking us up with that uh, setup there. Gave me, a, uh, gave me a lead 
So 360 camera, I'm excited to get one. And it looks like the technology is pretty easy to use. So we'll use that in a bunch of ride vids, e-bike pacing, etc. So now we've undone our two stem bolts here. We've just loosened them, like loosened them right off. And now we're gonna undo this top bolt here. This top bolt is not a strength bolt. It doesn't hold anything together really. It just adjusts the preload tension in your headset. So if your headset's ever loose, you undo these two bolts, loosen these two stem bolts right off, and then just micro torque this stem bolt uh, top bolt up, and that takes the slop out of your headset. Very important to do that. If you ride of a loose headset, you can cause the ring of death on your carbon steerer, and and also you wear out your wear out your bearings really really quickly. So you never want to ride of a loose headset. How do you check your headset te test tightness? Grab the front brake. Rock the bike back and forward. If there's any slop, take it to local bike shop or go on GCN or my channel. We look at the video. See, here we go. The fork just drops right out like that. So, yeah. All right. Well, what we'll do now is we'll put all this stuff down on the space. Don't lose it. Yeah, a good headset's really important to good set hand tension. We'll put this bike down there. Let the spiders crawl in it. Try to get too much sand in the in the uh, in the bearings here. I'll just sit behind the camera, and we're gonna. Drop it down. All right, here we go. This is what we're talking about. We can take the wheel off now. This is a, I do have a license for these guns, by the way, in case anyone's got a big safe pole and say there's a unlicensed, some unlicensed uh, guns in Beulah Park. It's my Beulah Road there. I do, have, I do have a license for these. And okay, so this is the fork. We've dropped it out. And this has been recently re-greased. We're gonna get a rag here to clean off all the all the grit. Looking on the floor for the rag. This is a professional workshop. Let me just pause the camera and we'll go find one. We, we, we're back. <laughs> this just goes to show you, like, I've been a YouTuber for, you know, for 12 years now, a professional YouTuber. You don't need to be organized. You just need to do it. You need to turn up and give your best, all right? Too many people uh, try to be too perfect on YouTube, etc., and they just paralyze their successes. So we're looking in here, you can see, can't really see too well, but there's no ring of death. You can sort of see a bit of a, a ring around there, that's just the bearing, but there's no etching on this fork. There's no cracks running down it or across it. So this fork, uh, in my unprofessional opinion, is in fantastic condition, safe condition. What we're gonna do now is, we're also gonna take off this bottom bearing here. You can sort of see the grit on that. Right, look at that, see a bit of grit there? That can just wear things out. So that darkness there, the, the dirt, all right, so we're going to clean that off. We're going to re-grease it as well. Um, let me just uh, put this down. So we're going to clean your bearing, and you're going to put it all back together. Make sure that you put your bearings in the right way. All right, make sure you do that. All right. So when you before you take everything off, don't take off in a rush. Don't be hungry. Don't be thirsty. Have some food. Have some water. Take your time with the stuff. Take photos, even though, if you're not sure which way it goes, and make sure that you put the bottom bearing in the right way. And you put the top bearing in the top versus vice versa and mix it around. Because often people put it in the gas. My headsets or notches because you've got the bearings in the wrong way around. Put this down over here. And then we're going to give it a full wipe down. I'm just going to pause this camera again, put this tripod a bit high because I'm getting hunched back and notch a damn down here. He's like, good looking guy in the camera. Doing all right. you got to troll yourself. If you can't troll yourself, when people troll you, you'll crack. You'll crack. Um, so yeah, this is this is what we call a proprietary fork, meaning if you ever did have get, need to get a new replacement fork for a specialized bike, you're a bit locked into their ecosystem. Um, you know, chances are of this fork having an issue is very very slim, but crashes happen. So this is this is where I, I have an issue with specialized. Uh, they do sell some fantastic stuff, but proprietary for, forks like this, you know, let me know down below if if if, if any fork any tapered fork of the same diameters will fit an SL4 Roubaix. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it's not gonna. So that's my issue is the bikes I sell on my website, durandod.com, we, we stay away from proprietary forks. We have standard forks that you can get these replacement for. So we've cleaned that down, we've inspected the outside, it looks fantastic. Well now we're gonna take out this plug here and we're gonna check for any inside cracks, delaminations, fibers drying out, etc. And then we can repair or replace depending on the setup here. So this bolt's pretty loose. Uh, now, these specialized plugs can be a little bit of a pain in the bum to take out. Right? I do recommend that your plug goes 
deep enough that it goes below your lower stem bolt. Right? Otherwise, it's going to get crushed and you're going to have a fork steer failure down the track. That's why with secondhand bikes, you need to drop the fork out. Or well, they need to drop it out for you because you're like, how, ask them, how do I know this fork doesn't have a crack in it? And it's like, oh, it just hasn't cracked on me. It's like, that's great, mate. It hasn't cracked on you, but how do I know it's not going to crack on me? How do I know this fork has integrity still? Any good bike seller worth their a sale will drop the fork out and show you. Then maybe they're not mechanically minded. Okay, get them to take to a bike shop, provide photographic proof that the fork's okay. I mean, that's what I do all the bikes I sell is I strip them down and give them a full-on safety check. Why would I sell something that I wouldn't ride? So that's a little thing here. Now these specialized plugs are a little bit, you know, so-so. But if you're a heavy rider over 100 kilos or something, you're probably better off with a better plug. So there's more of a weight when you plug. We're just gonna have to knock this one out. We'll pause this, specialized plugs. Be hard to get it in and out. So to remove the specialized plug, I learned this tip from Rich from Bike Detail Tech. Right, this is your specialized plug. I'll show you exactly how it works. Um, it, this is the plug. All right, so it goes in like that. And it, it, it's okay. It's long enough if you don't run spaces on top. But you want to make sure that, you know, this goes beyond your lowest stem bolt or you're going to crack your steerer. I'll show you exactly what I mean. I shouldn't say specialized, make it specialized, buy it, and then spec on their bikes. All right, so this is satisfactory. Can you sort of see here? What I mean. I've done many videos on this. All right, so the top of the fork, we're going to probably go about a few mil above, and then it's going to go. So this is this is satisfactory. This is why if you see someone with more than five mil spaces on their stem, you should say, "Hey, that's a carbon steerer. Your plug should go a lot deeper than that. Otherwise, you're going to you're going to cause a failure in your steerer over time. Whether it's for you or the next person who rides your bike, you don't want a fork steerer failing, no matter what the material." All right, so that's that done. So to remove this specialized plug, again, just even have a YouTube Google because not many of you got these ones. Be yeah, rich from, uh, I'll try and link it down below how to remove these ones. They basically got to pull off this little black thing and then going down to ground level. We're getting on the ground here. I love just putting things in the ground and just spending, taking your time, right? You never want to rush this stuff. This is very important safety stuff. You know, this is, yeah, these are the plugs that I like to use. Um, you always want to take your time uh, with these things. This is how you properly maintain your bike. Right? This is meditation for me. Yeah, you know, just a really, really good way to do things. This is your stock standard plug, and this is the deeper plug. This is what I recommend if you want to run spaces above your above your uh, your stem on a carbon steerer. Alloy steer doesn't matter because alloy steerers aren't as susceptible to crushing forces like carbon is. So these, you know, these air are very, very strong. They don't like being crushed. So the plug acts as a support for the crushing forces of the stem bolts. All right? When you do these stem bolts up, you are crushing it. All right? So you, when you have the plug in there, it, you know, it makes a, it's like a brace of support. Now, if you're, st st you know, if you're crushed down here, there's nothing supporting that. But if your plug keeps going down, then you're okay. All right? So you've got to make sure that plug goes here we go, this is a great way to see it. You know what I mean? Look at that. Now it's supported. It's supported. Now let's say I've got all these spaces above. Now it's not supported. And then when I tighten this one up, crack, crack, crack. Snap, papple, snap, crack, crackle, pap down the track. All right, so it doesn't happen straight away, but over time with a few bumps, a bit of races, a bit of crashing, a bit of sprinting, it can cause a total uh, steerer failure. Especially, that's what I like D shaped steerers like BMC. I think Cervelo are doing a D-shape, Factor doing D-shape, and the failures, I'm just not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of carbon forks failing. So yeah, that's how that's how it's run there. Uh, this is a specialized design. It's a pretty lightweight little plug. It's satisfactory if you don't run more than five mil spaces above your stem. Otherwise, if you're gonna run more than five mil spaces, this is a dangerous plug to use. This is inadequate. You wanna run something like this. Right, it's a bit heavier, but it's gonna be a lot safer, right? It's better to add 30 grams to your bike than a 30 grand hospital bill or worse. So, right, so let's turn the flashlight on and have a look inside this fork steer. And the flash on, and we can sort of see in here, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Like down the bottom, you can see the, the bag and stuff like that. But up close, there's no, you mean, there's no fracturing there. There's, there's, there's a couple of voids we can sort of see, but that's not too bad, you know. And hands are shaking from another ball white kicking in. But otherwise, it looks pretty good, you know. It looks pretty good otherwise, you mean? Nothing inside there. 
it looks too dodgy there's no fibers flaking out it all looks pretty hunky-dory you know I mean? and that just for me it just adds a lot of safety when I'm riding along a bit of certainty there that this fork is is not gonna fail on me all right now I'll show you what a dodgy fork looks like so you can see this fork here I mean there's dirt there's earwigs in there but you can sort of see the carbon fiber fibers you can see them sort of splintering out there so that's that's just a really dodgy fork. This is a brand new fork as well. I won't mention the brand because maybe they've improved since then, but it's just really, it doesn't look safe to me at all. Maybe it's totally gonna to be totally fine. I'm for a lightweight rider. Maybe it will never have a problem, or maybe it will fail on the first big bump. We don't know. But that's a dodgy looking carbon steer on a brand new fork from quite a reputable brand online. But I won't mention it because it wouldn't be fair for me if they have improved their quality control. Another uh, very famous brand of fork here, and you can sort of see this is what's called the ring of death. Here we go, zoom it in. All right, so now this isn't due to the manufacturing quality of the bike, this is due to the rider not properly maintaining the headset tension, in my opinion. And you can sort of see that the split ring there has etched into the fork. Now, this is quite a, a strong, probably giving away the manufacturing now, that's a, quite a thick fork, so it's not going to fail like a, a skinny fork would as, as it eventually could though you know probably unlikely because this brand of forks quite thick because it for me it's, it's built pretty pretty well so actually i will say who did made this. this is an eastern brand of fork you know i think this is how thick forks should be for some of these uh you know super lightweight stuff it does uh does look a bit better it doesn't look perfectly round though does it it looks a bit thicker on the right than the left was that just my notable white eyes Either way, there's a lot of material on this fork. So just maintain your fork, no matter what brand you're using. Don't you ride with a loose headset, okay? Also what we're seeing now, Cannondale is specking their bikes with plastic split rings. What on earth is a split ring, during rider? This is what a split ring is. It's a top cap, it's your top bearing. I'll put it over here, we'll, we'll clean this bearing out. This is a split ring, all right? So this is what is etching into the fork here. All right, this is a very important video. Give it a thumbs up if you like these sort of videos here. Oh, it basically is going in, here we go, get on two hands, and then it's basically what's happening with your loose headset is it's like, all right, so it's just ring barking the carbon there, just ring barking. Now some frames, the headset tolerances aren't so good, so it can cause a lot of sloppiness, but I would say, to be de devil's advocate, this has been caused by a loose headset, all right, so make sure your headset isn't being loosened from riding and you tighten up now and then. All right, so understand, it's not about talking these up even more, it's about the headset bolt tension this little top cap here right, this is what take the spacer out this is what tensions your headset bearings okay so if that's loose then this is happening now again before you start going all right just wrenching that right up no 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 you this is this is minute a very minute adjustment it's a preload preload bolt it's not a tension bolt it's very light preload okay it's not a security bolt it's a preload bolt so very small adjustments are required to take out the the nanometers of slack there okay so that's that's what's causing the ring of death okay all right make sure you you, you spec your bike every few months for ring of deaths don't ride with a loose headset understand this is very simple stuff i'm not an academic guy i'm a very basic person i can understand this and if i can anyone can okay this is not even iq points this is just common sense loose stuff it's gonna wear it out isn't it it's gonna wear it out. It could happen with an alloy steerer down the track as well but carbon's just a bit softer carbon's just a bit softer it's beautiful material very very strong very durable but it doesn't like wear and it doesn't like crushing there you go that's how you be safe out there use uh, just a bit of sliver of grease here and there um, got to clean those bearings out we'll make sure we've got top bearings it's, it's, it's small it's a tapered headset meaning the, the bottom one's bigger than the top we can look in this side this head tube here we don't see any cracks, you know, things like that. If it was just any, any cracks, we could be alarmed. But everything was very hunky-dory. Uh, very, very hunky-dory. Um, so, you know, very, very good. You can sort of, this is inside a... Oh, look at that rough that is. This is an S-Works bike. That's, that's how dirty and rough that is. That's just, that's fine. That's just normal. You, you go inside any expensive carbon bike, this is this is how they finish them inside. Because people don't look inside of this. People who buy S-Works bikes don't generally work on the S-Works bike. They, they give it to a bike shop to work on. That's not a good or bad thing. I'm not dissing, I'm just saying that's, you know, that's just, that's just how it is. People generally buy S-Works because of the, the clout, the, the one with floss, etc. Which is fine. But yeah, this is what's inside your, your S-Works bikes. Pretty much any high-priced bike. 
what we're going to do is we're going to clean out all this dirt here, all that grit. You know, that, your bicycle is like a relationship, having a relationship with it. Spend that bit of time, bit of care, and just you know, things will last a lot longer. And so we just clean it out, and things just last a lot longer. Clean out all that sand. Sand is friction. Friction is wear. Wear is fatigue. Fatigue is failure. Thanks for that quote, Jade. Bearings last, they last a long time. If you clean them out like this, they last a long time. And they've got different angles, so 45, 45, inch and a quarter. You've got different types, you've got inch and eighth, you know, 45, 36, you've got all different types. So make sure if you do get a, a replacement headset that's appropriate. Uh, there's a lot of different types, and that can be quite a frustrating experience trying to get a new one. Um, find out which one's for you, but this has still got heaps of play left, uh, so life left, there's no play there, because we look after it. We look after it, we, we grease it, we try and clean out all the grit here and there, and it's gonna last a long time. We're gonna put a sliver of this white light and crystal grease like this because it's biodegradable, non-toxic, it's carbon friendly, and I do this every few months, especially after riding in the wet. Use not a great deal, but cover those, cover the little sleeves there, front and top, top and bottom, and then we're gonna drop it in. You can drop it on your fork, but make sure you put it the right way, so that the, the concave bit on your fork, and then push it in so it's nice and even in there as well. Make sure it's nice and even. Generally, you're going to use two hands for this when we're filming it. But yeah, take your time. Take your time. Beautiful. We've got that pressed in just perfect. Look at that. Nice, clean, greased headset. It's going to be perfect to ride. Beautiful. Beautiful. Put a bit of, bit of grease on this on this fork here. And uh, good to go. Just a bit of a clean down with the rag. It's like a light little bit of grease in there just to prevent the galvanic corrosion. Whatever Lucia Technic calls it, he's got, also got a great channel. Check him out, Lucia Technic. So yeah, just give us a bit of clean. This is just maintenance. It's just having a healthy relationship with your bike, an intimate relationship, and it enhances how we do anything. Is how we do everything. Running up this bolt here, make sure you do it up to recommended torque. Well, the broiler puss is coming and have a little say good day. I'm gonna show you this little anus. Broiler. Oh yeah, that's what she thinks of my. That's what she thinks of my videos. All right, so. You know, you want to put a bit of a torque wrench uh, or torque setting, understand what that would feel like in here. So I put, I did about seven newton meters into that, and that way it doesn't bulge out too much. Split ring, again, a bit of sand gets in there, so it's good to take it out, clean it now and then. I think these should be made out of plastic from today onwards, and you could probably replace it with a plastic one. But yeah, just keep it headset properly tensioned, and I shouldn't say keep your headset tight, just keep your headset adequately tensioned and keep this split ring clean, there you go. Also this fork here, is this for landfill? No, 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 what we have to do is just cut it below that line and it's a perfectly good fork. There you go. A, a nine year old bike and it looks brand new, properly maintained, properly maintained. That's what we're talking about, beautiful. Flies and other brands could be notorious for is those sharp edges. All right, I like to file those down, uh, get a little file, just gently take the edge off of that, all right? The sharp edges can also etch into the carbon steerer over time. So for me, that's pretty giant, pretty good with this. Giant uh, bikes, their, their washers are generally filed back, but specialized, especially these old ones, pretty notorious for sharp edges. Pull this little sleeve out and just file down these, just, just take the edge off that sharp edge. See what I mean? That, that sharp point there, just file it back, just a nano bit, just smooth it off. This is actually not a bad idea, the wedges and stuff for different positions but it should be buffed off a little bit inside. It's too sharp for carbon steerers, in my opinion. I've, I have seen damaged uh, carbon specialized steerers. Round file there, just ran, the, got the round file, just ran it through it. You can sort of see now, it's just taken off. It's taken off the sharp edges, so just a little bit. All right, so this is made with a rounder edge. Oh, it feels way better, way less sharp. All right, and I'll brush off those little filings. Have a closer look. So see now it's got, the, it's got rid of the sharp edges, haven't we? There we go, zoom it in. Perfect, look at that. All right, see what I mean? Just take off that sharp edge there. This is what should be done in the factory. <laughs> but again, I don't rely on the engineers, I rely on logic and uh, things like that. Just just a nano, nano shed off there. It's just gonna make things last a lot longer. You know, I won't this, own this bike forever, so the next person who owns it, it's gonna have a bit of And I learn this stuff all the time. I'm always learning new things. I always, ha always have an open mind. Never think you know everything. You know a lot, but you won't know everything. There's always things to learn. So this is fantastic. Quick little solution there. Quick solution. Quick fix. You put the whatever number you want at the back. If you want plus 16, it's going to be the stem's going to be flipped up. This stem's pointed down. We're going to go minus 8. 
and we can also go for the extreme minus 16. So I think this is a pretty cool idea from Specialized, quite, quite innovative. It just needs to be filed out, be better inside. We're going to go minus 8 on this bike for today. Minus 8 degree, and the stem's pointed down. If we had the stem flipped up, it would be plus 16. Cut, so it's a few, there's, it's a few more above it. All right, it's been cut perfectly, and that's all the space we've got there. Perfect, this bike's set up for me, and uh, perfect done. So it makes sense, the steerer plug goes well below that bottom bolt. It's probably below the, uh, just probably below that, near the FSA line there. And that way, when we torque this up, torque that up, the crushing forces are protected because this, the plug, this little plug here goes below, it always has to go below the lowest part of your stem, all right, below that, the clamping force below your lowest part of your stem, otherwise you're going to have big trouble with China down the track, no good. Again, if you want to put spaces above your stem, run the big daddy, the BBC plug, all right, so that way if you've got all these spaces above your stem because you're not sure what position one you want or you want to keep your bike for resale, at least you're safe, all right, because it's going to go deep, otherwise you've got people are riding like that, they're riding like that, and then that, that, that this bolt here is just going to torque it over time and crack your steerer carbon steerer. People are like, I don't want to care, I'm just going to alloy steel steerer. They can still fail. You always want to drop, drop your fork every few months and a few thousand K and just regrease your headset, make sure everything's good to go. All right. so this is a very, very simple job. Takes you 10, 20 minutes. Took me a while with the camera, except for faffing around, talking another ball white, but you do it a few times, it becomes a very, very quick job. Perfect. Use these specialized uh, stems, the multi-position ones, this top cap, it has to be used with it, otherwise it can be a little bit, a bit dicky. All right, so make sure you keep this top cap, you can sort of spot them because they have this big gap there where it can slide around a bit. Okay, so proprietary top cap for the proprietary stem. Stem. Bolt here, remember that little uh, washer? Those little dead long legs. There's <sighs> on the thing in there. Uh, dead long legs skin. It's a spider skin. They shed their skin, pretty crazy, yeah. This grease here will wipe that off, otherwise it attracts dirt. And this little bad boy goes on here, make sure you don't lose that because it does help make your, bra your brake pivot properly. These Gen 2 SRAM brakes, not a big fan of, they can wobble around a bit, I prefer the Gen 1s, about the same weight. And that's all we have to do now, now we'll check the headset tension, torque up the uh, bolts, take it for a ride, and we're good to go. We're going to make sure the, uh, the headset tension is good, we'll straighten those bars up. We're going to grab the front brake, in Australia we have the front brake over here, not touching the rear brake, and we're just going to rock it back and forward and there's a little bit of play so we're just going to tension it up here just, just look at that just a little tiny bit grab the front brake rock it back and forward there's no play so just did that you know, sixteenth of a turn now we're going to get a torque wrench which we don't have at the moment but we're going to use and this is how you do up your bolts all right so you do it up to this make sure our bars are straight first of all and it's a bit hard when you're doing the nullable white bars are, just give it a tap that's pretty straight. And then we're going to just snug it, tighten this one up just so it snugs. And then we're going to go down to here. And this will create some more of an even clamping. Go up here till it snugs. And then just little turns like quarter turns. Quarter turns. All right, this is how you do it. And any bolts you use. And make sure you stick it balls deep in there. Otherwise, if you put it in half like that, turn it, you can twist it and round it out. So balls deep in there, full traction, quarter of a turn. You know, and just getting, you know, half a newton meter every turn until we get our desired four to five to six newton meters. I don't need a torque wrench because my hands have torqued up a lot of bolts with torque wrenches. But yeah, you get the get the hang of it. So I do recommend, highly recommend, you get a torque wrench just so you understand what five or six newton meters feels like. And then it's how you do it up, and that's perfect. We're good to go. We're good to go. Now it's going to feel a lot safer riding this bike. We know with the forks, got integrity. We know the headset's dialed, so we've got no ring of death, and uh, it's just going to feel so good as well. Just no chitter chatter, all right? And boom, there we go. Up to about five, six newton meters, and there we are good to go. Thanks for the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, share it around. This is very important stuff. You might not like me, like my, might not like my opinions and stuff, but you have to agree. Safety first. Safety first. Beautiful. If you like the video, if you like the video, let me know. Um, next video we'll do, we'll do another video, we'll, we'll take the bars off, we'll take the, this stem cover off, we'll take the hoods off, we'll take the, I'm going to do the bar tape to inspect these carbon bars for any delamination or cracks. Goes for alloy bars as well. You saw my Instagram post recently where I posted a picture of an alloy bar where it had holes in it from the sweat, the protein sweat, the ammonia, 
eroding the alloy. So you take the bar tape off and that's another five, 10 minute job there just for safety. All right? And your bike just feels so much better and safety in your head. If you want more information, go visit durinride.com. We've got an ebook out there on cycling tips. It's called Durinride's Lean Body Bible. Hundreds of tips in there. It's gonna save you thousands of dollars, literally. Save you a lot of heartache, a lot of time wasted, etc. I mean, money, you can make money back, but time you lost, time you wasted, you can't get it back. So my goal is to give the tips to save people time, not just money, save your time, save your health, increase your performance, at minimal effort, just logical stuff that you might overlook because it's not mainstream. Anyway, we'll see you there, drewnod.com. Thanks for watching.